the news came out last week. There's nothing going on. No, um, EA tried to rebrand loot boxes as surprise mechanics. Well, they in the it was just in that hearing, right? So no, it's not really rebranding. It's what they're trying to well, they're disguise trying to, well, that's, them that's as. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to rebrand them as, as... I don't know. See, my thing is, don't they already have a name in that game? I, I guess they are. I guess they are they're trying to change they're, they're the trying, overall name. Dude, so I'm looking. Surprise, I completely see Surprise this. mechanics. I completely fucking see this as them attempting to... Yeah, rebrand. See, I I don't boxes think and the gambling around them <sighs> as like surprise mechanics, which makes me think: should we just call casinos surprise palaces? You go in, you give money, you get a surprise. Exactly. You know what the surprise is? We take your fucking money and keep it. Get the fuck out, <laughs> loser! Surprise! You're broke. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I love it. It's when she says it in the video. I seriously, all I could think of was like a six-year-old. It was like, it was the most, aw, aren't you so special kind of moment. Then she just even led that look on her face if like I, a six-year-old who's clever, thinks they're clever. If I was from Surprise Alabama. Mechanics. If I was from Alabama, I would look at her and say, oh, bless your soul. Bless your heart. Bless your soul. Because it's like. Really? I was, oh, I was dying. It was so great. And the senator was just like, what the fuck did she just say? Like, really? <laughs> did she really? How you guys doing today? We're the hey, Ungodly buddy. Geeks. We're going to start off by bitching about EA. Yes. Which is something we do very well. My name is Joe. I'm Luke. And today we're bringing you surprise mechanics. You <laughs> give us money and you get a surprise. What's the surprise? We take your fucking money. <laughs> I just don't. I like like it's it's amazing to me that that her position exists in the first place. But yeah, like really, did they give? Was that her title as like chief? Oh fuck! I don't even remember. It, it's one of these things that's one hundred percent corporate speak for yeah. you. Got to bullshit the government. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly oh, what okay. it is. Like, um, it's like VP of engineering and uh, software. At liaisons or I don't I don't liaisons remember now. No, in it, there it, somewhere. It, liaison wasn't in there, but it, it's a bunch of just corporate mumbo jumbo <laughs> that that basically says you're Go the, distract the government. You're the bullshitter. <laughs> you know, like kind of how senior Sarah, bullshit officer. There you go. Kind of like how Sarah Huckabee Sanders was the bullshit officer for Donald Trump for a year and a half, yeah. and was the most honest and transparent press secretary we've ever had. And I'm like, I'm not. No, I don't. She well, wasn't press secretary. Yeah, she was press secretary. Is that her title? Mm -hmm. I thought the press secretary was the one who stood at the podium and took she, all the She shit. was the one that did that, yeah. Did she do that? Yeah, she replaced Sean Spicer. You remember Sean Spicer? Kelly, who, wait, who did, who was it again we were talking about? Um, what do you mean who was it again we were talking about? How high are the you? woman. Sarah? Sarah? Sarah, okay, Sarah yes, Sanders, yes. yeah. I'm thinking in my head I pictured Kellyanne Conway instead. No, no, no. And no, then no, I no, realized, no. yeah, no, Sarah. And then I was thinking, no, Kellyanne Conway does do that job, Joe, forgetting whose <laughs> name you had said. Yeah, that's how I am. <laughs> <laughs> I want to remind you guys that approximately 15 seconds was what it took for Luke to forget what we were talking about. I don't even think it was 15 seconds. You I said know. someone else's name and your fucking name was gone. I know. I, I gave you some leeway here to make you. Um, but yeah, it was just like, what? And I didn't mm -hmm. even see the video. I just saw that six second clip of her standing there saying, Surprise mechanics, like like, like legitimately, no. someone like I would stand up and just applaud. Yeah, at right? that that attempt because that it's, twist. It's one of those things. It's like <laughs> that's, that's so amazing that you're trying that. You're so, you know what? Everyone was like, it takes courage to remove the headphone jack on Apple products. No, it took courage to stand up in front of <laughs> fucking Congress and say to them. It's not gambling. It's surprise mechanics. Like, <laughs> comparing no. it to kin comparing it to Kinder eggs. No. Comparing it to fucking. Oh no, you know what? If I exchange toys. money for a Kinder Egg, I might be getting a cheap, shitty chili, but I'm also getting tasty chocolate. If I give yeah. you money for an item uh, in the game, what am I getting? Especially after buying the original product. Right, yeah. You don't like, buy a Kinder Egg and then buy a $30 add on. 
Yeah, it's not like I buy a Kinder Egg. It's not, uh, it's not like I have to buy the candy store before I can pay for the Kinder Egg, right? Yeah. Like, that's or you what don't buy is. the chocolate shell. Yeah. And then buy the. <laughs> like, the you're, not sitting there, you're not sitting there buying the chocolate shell and then buying the toy separately. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's not how it works at all. So, no, it's not like buying a Kinder Egg, okay? Just get the fuck out of here with that shit. So, yeah, I had to, I had to rant about on that. Top of, on top of everything, even more than, like, you could almost, like, she wanted to compare it to those random blind bag toys, like, uh, the ones I bought for a little while were the Halo um, Spartan Armors. Right, yeah, where you get like... Yeah, and it's like, yes, but you're there's a very big difference from not knowing which physical product you might get out of a set yeah. versus not knowing which digital product you're going to get out of your manipulated yeah, chances. Like, like that goes back to the, the comparison I just made, whereas yeah. when, you, when you have those toys, you're not buying the bag and then the toy. Yeah, no, no, and I'm not, I, I, yes, that, that, but I'm talking about just the simple difference between a physical item in your hand versus just something But like I said, that goes back to that thing where you have to, like, in order to make the microtransactions in the first place that are gambling, you have to pay an emission fee, right? Not even fucking, not even casinos charge you an emission fee. Some, I think. I don't think the horseshoe does. Well, I think it's Jack's now. And we went to, I could be completely um, wrong, maybe some though. We went to, too. back in, like, years, a couple years back, I went to a casino with some people Sheep from work, face. and um, I don't remember which one we went to, but they didn't charge us, just ID'd, well, they ID'd Jewel, but, you know, whatever. The rest of us got in, no problem. So, yeah, no, there was no cover fee to go yeah. into the casino, right? Because they're already going to take our money from us. That's, that's, what, that's the what plan. Did. That's why they'll, usually they'll some of them give you free drinks, at least in Vegas. Yeah. Um, we're Cheap not in food. Vegas, no. We were in, like, Southwest Indiana. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just fucking found it hilarious. It wasn't even, it didn't even make me angry. I just found it so funny. Yeah. Like it's one maybe of those that things. Was, maybe that's their plan. It's like, we're going to be as stupid as fucking possible. I mean, Americans do love stupid and shit. And look at the people we make famous. We can like get away with it. Like, like it'll make yeah. it less egregious. Yeah. We didn't just fucking take a dump all over the senator's floor. <laughs> I mean, they might as well have, though. You know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Except they're giving him puppy dog eyes. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's like when you first bring a puppy home and it pisses on the carpet. You can't be too mad at it because it's a puppy and you're still teaching it. That's essentially what she was there. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. Was, she was being the puppy. I, I don't know, man. It's like, it's just, oh, my God. Anyway, let's what move What I on. love is that was to the UN Council. Yeah. And... The guy had to ask her the question like three times because she couldn't understand him. <laughs> see, it was just the setup to the whole clip made me go, oh, no. See, like the whole thing around that, given her uh, her final answer to what the question to the question, I'm half in between. Was this serious? Was this a joke? Or was she really just that fucking stupid? I mean, the 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 uh, the attempt to dodge his question too, which everybody does in yeah, these of situations, course. of course. Yeah, hers was so unbelievably bad. Mm-hmm. It was just the question was, do you consider ha- you know do you consider your your games having loot boxes or something like that or what do you call it? whatever he said? Yeah, and then she goes on this diatribe and and like he asks her again. He's like, well. That's when she's like, well, we call them surprise mechanics. <laughs> and uh, it was beautiful. It's, it's just amazing to me. All right. Um, so we got that out of the way. We bitched out <laughs> EA. EA, go fuck yourselves. You don't get to rebrand your loot box gambling as surprise mechanics. Um, otherwise, we would have to rename casinos surprise palaces. You come in, we take your money. All right. So. She's going to get those toys from that. One kid YouTuber who's a billionaire now. Oh, right. Band. Yeah, yeah, Riley's yeah. toys. Just Riley's his whole line is banned. Yeah, because he has... Because he has, they're surprise toys. Yeah, surprise mechanics in his toys. Mm-hmm. Except, like I said, you make the one purchase, you don't pay $60 admission fee and then pay additional money afterwards. Um, so let's move on to news of the stupid. Yeah. Um, this is one that, that popped up on my, uh, my news feed. That's just... Uh, 
it, it's equal parts awful, stupid, and noble in a way. Florida man in Palm Bay is says he steals pool floats for sex instead of raping women. Now, let me break this down for you. This guy looks like he's probably on methamphetamines. Okay? And, uh... <laughs> damn it, Luke, stop watching videos. <laughs> I thought it was an image. Um, Florida man suspected of multiple pool foot thefts told police that he has sex with the inflatables instead of raping women. So I guess, in a sense, that's, that's the nobility. He steals pool floats from backyards to fuck them instead of going on his raping rampages. And it's just like, huh, that's weird. That's just so weird. It's like equal parts awful and stupid, though, because why? It's it's incredibly fucked up, but the, my favorite part is that that's his statement to the police. That's the statement like They to caught the him, arrested him, going, what the fuck were you doing? And why? then <laughs> why? he's like, I'm doing the noble work, officer. I'm doing noble work, <laughs> officer. I'm stealing this pool float that looks like a flamingo so I can fuck it so I'm not raping women. Yeah. <laughs> God. It's like it's just like yeah we're we're arresting this guy. Just, <laughs> yeah. We're fucking putting him somewhere. There's no there's no mercy to be had here. He's you going are... into a padded room. <laughs> this is why we need to fund psychiatric care. And I mean, in dude, the states. like the stigma around mental health needs to just go away. We need to start treating it properly. But that'll never happen because reasons. it costs money and they don't like funding anything that but, actually but, helps people. But they'll spend billions of dollars on privatized institutions for you know prisons and yeah. shit, you know. But you take that money and you flip it around and you put it into rehabilitation and you put it into getting better and getting help. Guess what happens? Everything gets better. Mm-hmm. Well, we can't have that because you can't make money when everything's better. Okay. Except you can because when you do that, you get the economy flowing because everybody has more money because they're more productive members of society. Anyway, so yeah, um, he when he was arrested around 1.30 a.m. on Thursday, June 13th, um, he had with him a white garbage bag full of what he identified to police as deflated pool floats. <laughs> these are the ones that did work. Yeah, like, these are the ones that reminded me I had a small penis, uh, so I stabbed them. Uh, he had a stash. <laughs> In a vacant house of around 75 pool floats. <laughs> Just hanging up all over the place. It's like, like creepy, like a creepy clown circus thing. I'm just like, dude, what what is going on here? Somebody's going to tell him about blow-up dolls and it's going to blow this motherfucker's mind. Right? Like, like <laughs> oh man, like, dude, why? He gets it. He's like, finally, it's a real woman. It's, oh God, I can't get it up if it's not a dolphin. <laughs> It needs to be a flamingo, damn it. It needs to be vaguely bed-shaped. Yeah, I can't get it up if it's not just a circle tube. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's just that was just so fucking stupid, and we're done. That's great. Um, so I guess, you know, he's not raping women, but he is stealing your pool float. Um, so, yeah. Just leave an extra float for him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Poor bastard. <laughs> Get if you something. sit there and you leave, live in Florida, leave out a couple extra uh, pool floats for this guy. It's just so uh, one. It's gonna be a sad day when he goes into uh, somebody's, you know, backyard to their pool. Yeah, thinking he scored a new float, and it turns out to be a live alligator. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the end. Oh, you know what? Um, that would be a rather appropriate ending. Yeah, I mean, it'd be an awesome ending. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude, go out like a boss. And by go out by like a boss, I mean that gator goes out to eat like a boss, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So, (laughs) um, Blood Saint, Ritual of the Night. Yeah, you've been playing the shit out of that. I've been playing the ever-loving shit out of this game. Um, I bought it two days ago, or Wednesday, I bought it, yeah, two days ago now, holy shit. Um, I bought it two days ago on Switch, not realizing that it didn't release until Tuesday. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that sucks. So yeah, I, I now have the game on Switch. So I'll let you guys know how it how it fares on there next week when uh, we record again. Um, but I did buy it on PC, and I have to blame Jim Sterling and um, fucking hell. Uh, 
uh, a Twitch fo- uh, streamer I followed named Icarus. Mm-hmm. I sat there and watched Icarus play in it mm-hmm. Wednesday and Thursday. And Jim Sterling, of course, releases Jim Pressions on it. That's and, what I watched. Yeah. And he said, like, it's good. It's great. It's amazing. Buy it. And I'm like, yeah. I will buy it. And then I bought it and it was nothing but disappointment. But that's okay. <laughs> because you bought it on the wrong thing. Because I bought it on Switch. Because like I said, I mean, I, I like... Games like that, little games, little indie type games, mm-hmm. um, is something that I uh, I want to play on my Switch. Yeah, I don't know I why, the same way. but my Switch has become my little indie machine in a way. It feels appropriate for the portability side of it. Yeah, because I still in my like you know late nineties kid brain can't conceive a portable game. That's not like a Game Boy game. Yeah, right? It's amazing. I, so, I'm still mind blown by it. Like, I got that with the Vita, and that's why I loved the Vita so mm-hmm. much. And I will always sing the praises of the Vita, but that's basically what the Vita was. You know, it was like, it was a step between like PS1 and PS2 in a way. Yeah. It was almost, as, it was powerful enough as a mobile platform for PS2 that we got HD remasters of PS2 games for the fucking system, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh man, yeah, I want to play that. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it is for me. Um, so yeah, I, I buy these games on Switch mm-hmm. so I can play them, like, you know, go downtown or go out to eat or go sit at like work or something and just, oh yeah, this is awesome. That's why I bought Skyrim. Yeah. I did, you know, because it's a full console game that I carry in my hands. It's like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it's not pixelated it's not you know it's not bad it looks pretty good it's not legend of zelda Link's awakening on the game boy color yeah you know it's like oh my god it's not an adaptation it's the whole fucking thing you know it's not a you know so it's like for me yeah so i, I bought it on switch was disappointed because i down i bought it and it's like and then i looked at the eShop date it doesn't release till june 25th i'm like fuck so i was sitting there watching um Watching my Icarus lives, Mr. Icarus stream the game yesterday. The game is, is incredible. It looks amazing. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm buying it. Yeah. So I bought it on Steam, downloaded it, and I muted his stream, minimized it, and started playing the game. Like, fuck yeah, I'm going to play this game. Yeah. And right from the get-go, if you like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, or any of the games in that vein, uh, Aria of Sorrow, Dawn of Sorrow, uh... Portrait of Ruin, games like that, where they're Metroidvania type games. Um, or you love Metroid games, you know, mm-hmm. Super Metroid, Metroid Zero uh, Mission, Metroid Fusion, whatever. You will love this game. It is fucking incredible. And it's so it's so easy to run. I'm pretty sure if you have a potato PC, you can play this game. Yeah. Um, it looks good, too. It like, looks amazing. I love yeah. the, the art style is great. Yeah. That's what, when I watched Jim's video... And watched just a little bit of it. I was like, okay, that looks exactly like that. that like, it's as much the kind of art style I want to see as like I was excited for Cuphead, right? Because I love, also love that really, really old, mm-hmm. like pre Warner Tunes cartoons. Yeah, and that's all Cuphead is, and I love that style. This game equally has a just awesome fucking I mean, style from the like the dragon boss that's in there and everything. I was like, yeah, I have to play that. The game is is very much like. I, it is 100% a spiritual successor to Symphony of the Night, yeah. which to me is still the best Metroidvania game ever. From what I hear, unapolo- completely unapologetically, where it's anything not copyrighted, they ripped straight. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> like which, the fucking Honestly, rights. considering that Iga is the guy who created that in the first place, yeah. he has every fucking right to, right? Exactly. Like, they take everything, every mechanic from those games, that was ever there, the backdash and the collecting of souls and items and, and like the way you explore, the way you move around, everything was directly ripped from Symphony of the Night or Dawn of Sorrow or Aria of Sorrow or these other games in that style. Um, and they do it so much better, yeah. in my opinion. Like, I've been playing the game. I played the game for 10 fucking hours yesterday. I haven't <laughs> done that with a game um, since, like... Fuck, man. The, well, since Doom 2016 dropped, yeah, what, three years ago now? I, I just sat there and I played it. It's all I did yesterday. So anything I meant to do, like laundry and all that, just got fucking pushed to the side. I didn't even go up and get food. I just sat here and played this <laughs> game, right? So I'm like, oh my god, this game is mind-blowing. And it really, really is. 
there are some grievances I have with it. Mm-hmm. There are some minor things, like little itty bitty teeny stupid shit that they can easily fix. Like uh, at the very beginning, you have some dialogue between you and a character, and uh, she's talking, but her mouth's not moving, and there's nothing popping up in the text box. <laughs> so like that was like, oh, that's that's goofy. Um, yeah. There's a lot. There's some clipping issues, which clipping is difficult to fix. So I'm not even really going to complain about that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of physics though that I enjoy, like her hair and the scarf she wears moves as she runs. And it's like, oh, that's cool. That's where the clipping issues come into play though, because sometimes her hair will just fucking clip Clips right through right her body. Through. It's something where, like, especially anime style games. Yeah. You just kind of you, you look at the clipping and it's like it. just I, when you yeah. have fifteen foot long hair. There's nothing fifteen you can do foot with long it. hair or your sword is eighteen feet long and like yeah is the you know like halfway through your body when it's resting and it's like all right this is a fucking anime game I guess I got to deal with this shit. Thankfully, there's none of that part. <laughs> there's none of that stupid nothing shit. That, that no, nothing bad. that egregious. It's just when you have like because you can customize uh, the look of Miriam. Miriam is of course your main character, and Miriam is what's called a. Uh, shard bear and what that means is she sees this she sees this child where she had this crystal infused to her body that i'm still not sure what it does yet makes her a pc makes her <laughs> makes her strong yeah it makes her a pc player character um and when she was imbued with the shard it put her into a coma for 10 years and nobody knew why but whatever it basically gives her the power to absorb demon powers Kind of like how in uh, Aria of Sorrow, Soma, the main character, is a reincarnation of Dracula, which apparently allows him to absorb the souls of other enemies and makes them stronger. It's literally the same exact mechanic. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> just change souls to shards. Like, literally all it is. And I still find myself when I'm sitting there playing, like, I gotta get this motherfucker's soul. Like, no, I gotta get it shard. Doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> gotta have a soul. <laughs> Fuck it. Doesn't matter. Get it. It's all the same damn thing. Yeah. Um... But yeah, it's like it's um I'm sitting there and I'm just I'm playing the game and like I said, she's she's that and there comes to a point where you you've uh, you come across an enemy that in this case is an NPC instead and you can mm-hmm. customize your look. So you can have like different hairstyles, different colors to your outfit, different uh eye colors and shit like that. You can change a lot of things about the character. Mm-hmm. And um like so you can have like really long anime hair if you want really long anime hair. We gotta find, but but you gotta you gotta find like magazines throughout the thing that have different hairstyles to level your barber up. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so it's not like everything's unlocked from the get go. You yeah. gotta find this shit, and so you yeah. and you level up your barber. Mm-hmm. Like you literally can level up the barber. He's gotta get better. Hair's more. <laughs> Another magazine. Learn better. Um, smile. Minor spoiler. Some of the dialogue between him. He says, "I have to go through six hundred and sixty six hairstyles before I can break the curse." <laughs> So it's like, okay, now if the end game menu is anything to go by, there are not 666 hairstyles in the game, thankfully. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can change, you know, you can, you can customize them and stuff, and it's really cool. Now, um, those drops from monsters, are they. Some of them are quest. Actually, I think pretty much all of them are either quest rewards or you find them quest- in chests okay. throughout the game. Um, because I've not. And, and maybe it's only because I've only played 10 or 11 hours, but I've not come across an enemy that drops them. Okay. Because they're all Which key items. So, I see. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Like, yeah, it, would, it wouldn't make any sense. Or... It wouldn't make any sense to have them drop multiple times, right? Yeah. Getting the same, getting a hair, was whatever the hair volume number nine. Yeah, getting hair volume number nine three times isn't going to change anything about yeah. hair volume number nine and the style it brings, right? So, yeah. Um, it doesn't, it's kind of a silly, stupid thing. Um, but, but that's fine. That means you can have a list of where the chests are, and I can just go farm them. Right, away. basically, the game's art style, like you said, is very it's it's beautiful. Like everything is three dimensional, but you play and really great animations too. Along oh with yeah, it. no, no, <laughs> no. I'm gonna go with no on Miriam it's, and the enemies. What... On Miriam and the enemies, her and an- everything is perfect. Yeah, it's the NPCs where it suffers a bit. Um, they no. didn't. They didn't put quite as much detail into your your other characters in the game, like the people you talk to and the quest givers and shit. The other NPCs. Um, I I noticed that I noticed that, and I play on. I'm playing on PC. Mm-hmm. All my graphical options are maxed out because of course they are. 
It's because a pretty simple game. It's a it's a it's a simple game with a beautiful art style that I I can definitely say is probably a little more demanding on the high levels than it would be on lower levels. Um, I get sixty frames a second all the time, but every now and then I'll have like a dip into fifties. Mm-hmm. But um, the uh, and it's a very rare dip, not even something major, and it's usually during a transition, a screen transition. Mm-hmm. But no, the animations on the NPCs are a little are just a little less uh, fluid. Mm-hmm. Like you can notice it. Like I at least I noticed it. Um, like there's a an alchemist who is your friend named Johannes, and um, when he's walking during those sequences, you can tell that they didn't spend as much time. <laughs> just fucking. Like he walks, he and moves. His feet moving. Yeah, like he walks, he moves. You know, like a like an NPC would. Except it's it, not as fluid and it's, nice as the enemies. It's janky. And it's a little character. janky. Yeah, like when you compare someone like Miriam or um, the other playable character whose name escapes me because it's your um, sort of typical anime Japanese name, and I don't I don't care about that kind of shit anymore. Um, it, yeah, it's just, it's just a little more janky. Yeah, just a little more janky. Like you can tell they just. Not that they didn't care, I think. They just didn't put as much effort into it. But Miriam herself is just... She's she's very well animated. She's very well... Um, she's very fluid, her movements are. Mm-hmm. And it's not... And, like, it's not too noisy. Like, a lot of games who do this kind of style where it's three-dimensional objects, you know, or three-dimensional things, on a 2D plane like this, they always yeah. put so much into animating the characters... That it seems... Can get a little overboard. It can get a little overboard where she's just perfect. Mm-hmm. All her movements are perfect. None of it's over over the top or anything. It's exactly what it needs to be. It's bare bones in a way. Mm-hmm. That is... And it's exactly where it needs to be. Nice. And there's a huge variety of weapons, of course. And back to the environments, though. You very much encounter environments that are typical Castlevania. You start yeah. off in a village on fire. It's every <laughs> fucking game. Except for Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night, you go straight to the castle. But every fucking game... Circle of... Uh, nope. Circle of the Moon, you go straight to the castle, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but yeah, like, like that, that's very typical. Like You look at Rondo of Blood with mm-hmm. the Richter and on the PC engine, I think is what it was, and the Sega, Sega something in Japan or whatever. You started in a fucking village on fire. Yeah. Even um, Castlevania, the uh, first of the 3D Xbox 360 games. Yeah. Castlevania Circle of the Moon. Lament no. of Innocence started in a, in a village on fire. Fucking Lord yeah. of Shadow started in a village Lord on fire. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, the sequel. Yeah, they all did. And so it's it's one of those things where it's like, it's very, very Castlevania. And very, then you go very, into a castle. Then you go into a castle and everything's nice and ornate and <laughs> fancy. And then you go into it. You got you got a church area. You got an underground area. You, I'm sure there's a hell area, too. I haven't yeah. gotten far enough into the game to find that. And what Castlevania game would be complete without a clock tower of some kind, right? Yeah. <laughs> go to the clock tower. So, I mean. Find it, the double jump. <laughs> so, in, in stuff like this, it's all. Actually, you already have the double jump by the time you get to the clock tower. Okay, well, Ooh. whatever. Yeah, right? There's Fucking definitely twist a double there. jump and there's definitely a clock tower. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where it's very much like you, you know what to expect from the environments. Yeah. But that's that does not hurt the game at all. It's not a detriment in any way. It still look good. It's oh, they're so beautiful. They're everything's colorful and bright. The textures are sharp and clean. Uh, it's like it, it's everything I've ever wanted from a Castlevania game. If I'm being yeah. perfectly honest with you, like it is, it is the game. There are tons of enemies, tons of enemy varieties, and they're all very generic names. Mm-hmm. But they all have pretty cool designs. Like there's a fucking knight with a lion's head that you fight. That has this really, really cool ornate armor. He has this big ass sword with runes on it. it. Looks fucking. It really does look cool. And that's the one. If you're a swordsman like me, because I'm, I'm just a sucker for swords. I don't know what it is about them. They were never actually used in battle any time. Um, it's like I love swords. So I, I've been farming him for the sword expertise shard, which increases the attack speed and, and attack strength of swords, because mm-hmm. that's what I do. And of course, if you're a weeb, there are katanas. <laughs> There are great swords, uh, great axes, which count as great swords because mm-hmm. there's no great axe designation. Um, tons of weapons. You get guns, mm-hmm. and uh, there's like 
you, you can find different types of ammunition, of course, like fire ammo, armor piercing ammo, shield breaking ammo, normal ammo, soft point, <laughs> hollow point, stuff like that. Yeah. And then there you got that, like the infinite bullets for when you run out of ammo, which do like dick for damage, but whatever, mm. it's cool. You can do a gun run if you want to. Um, there are accessories that you can equip that does change our appearance. Yeah. Like hat helms and masks and necklaces and shit. You see them pop. Well, I don't know about necklaces, but you see them pop up on her head. Yeah. So, like, for the longest time, I've run around with a fucking Fallout 4 ventilator on my face <laughs> and uh, a dancing mask with a goddamn helm on that just sat on top of my head, like a dull bowler hat and mm-hmm. a fucking beret and shit like that. Like, it, it, it's a lot of really cool shit in the game. Yeah. I wish the armor changed her appearance, too. But it doesn't. But it doesn't, no. But, uh, like, you always see her her default, like, corset-type uh, armor and her little skirt, which is fine. Sexy uh, got check standard out. Yeah, there. pretty much. Um, not, not that that's negative either, though. That's, no, that's not, actually fantastic. And it, it, fits, it fits the aesthetic really well. And that's another thing. Like, nothing... She's not overly sexualized. Which is mm-hmm. awesome. Like, I love that. Like, I know, I hate it when things are just sexy for the sake of being sexy. Mm-hmm. She's definitely not overly sexualized, but there are some enemies that are. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a bunny chick you find. She has giant tits and they flop. <laughs> like, all the fucking time. They're just bouncing when she's They're just like, spanked. we have to put in the titty physics. She has the standard, like, anime tits. Yeah. Right? They're just overly big for and no good reason. Everywhere. And she, she hops everywhere around. and she kicks you. And as she's doing all this, you're just distracted by her bouncing tits. <laughs> uh, in fact, the very first boss in the game is a giant tentacle monster with big ass tits. <laughs> and they bounce. Yes, if you're wondering, if you're perverted out there, they bounce. Um, of course. The game is the game is still fantastic though. Like none of that none of that sits there and hurts any of it. Um, like I said, I actually rather enjoy that she's a female protagonist who isn't overly sexualized. You know, like Bayonetta is overly sexualized. I I think. That doesn't mean that Ben is a bad game or a bad mascot or a bad character. She is overly sexualized. Well, that's the that, that was the point. the point, right? Yeah. But still, it doesn't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what point I was making there. But she that's that's just she's overly sexualized. Yeah, it's Bayonetta is overly sexualized for the that it fits into the plot. Right. That's that's a huge point of it. It's not like um, a GTA. Yeah. Character. Right. Like a female who's just that's. But even then, they're doing it on purpose. Well, yeah, because they're hookers or something. Or, like, it's or not like it's, it's not like your typical anime, um, yeah. softcore, edgy protagonist or whatever, where she's just wearing a bikini for plot reasons. Like, there's that one anime. She's wearing the bikini because. Like, like, let's look at that one anime. Uh, I don't know the name of it. Um, that one anime. Where it's a like chick with the black, them. black and red hair, and when she powers up into her battle armor oh, it's just that skimpy ass uh, like thing kill a kill yeah exactly something yeah. like that or uh well, it's just like like a thousand like that. other examples of a thousand other examples of it yeah no I, I i rather enjoy that you know yeah. she's just a strong female lead and she's great and like the voice acting is actually really nice like is everything voice acted everything's voice acted yes so, yes yeah like it's all busy, biggest complaints from those games I, I'm really pathetic in that I need the voice acting. Um, it's not like Fallout 4, though. So I don't, I don't know what to take from that. Um, but everything is voice acted. But you, it's like The Witcher, how you can just like, oh, I don't want to hear you talk. I yeah. can just hit the button and skip the text. Like, it's yeah. fine. Or if you can, or like if you're someone like me who can read way faster than they can speak and take everything in, you just hit the A button and get through all of it. But I have to turn subtitles off because of that, because I find myself reading it and then getting way far ahead of the actual conversation so in most in a lot of games i'll turn subtitles off unless it's like red dead where there are times that you can't actually hear the person because of whatever is going around so you have to read the subtitles that's why i turned the music off in skyrim just fucking a rain yeah i did that in skyrim too but like in uh it fucking it, it randomly there's just a fucking bird cawing next to you as you're trying to listen to some fucking dialogue in my had, head. You know, I had that happen. So goddamn annoying. I had that fucking happen in The Witcher 3. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there talking with somebody. Or there's a waterfall. Yeah. And it's just they still go on with their conversation even though all you hear is... What did you do? You hear... 
And, 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 and it's like it's like you're talking to shy ronnie paid, right <laughs> it's, it's like you're talking to shy ronnie in that fucking lonely island music video yes. it's just because all you can hear is <laughs> or ah! it's like fuck the you waterfall of the bird um yeah no everything is voice acted i mm-hmm. i've not come across any bit of dialogue that isn't the voice acting is very well done i don't have an issue with anybody's accents <laughs> or anything like it's all nice kind of like like uh, it takes me back to uh, the whole criticism for Breath of the Wild, how Zelda in her English voice sounds like a Renaissance Fair English. It uh, it sounded like they were trying for that too. That yeah. was my that was the issue for me. Yeah, because if it had seemed like it was just what so it just felt like they were pushing it. Yeah, know, it was just. Uh, which for me with how over the top it was I actually really enjoyed it, <laughs> it for the comedy factor yeah it yeah. was like it was legitimately over the top like trying yeah to act too which hard I accepted it I, I liked it because of because of that one stupid feature like that one stupid aspect of it yeah whereas in this game everything's voice acted nothing feels forced you know at yeah. least nothing I found so far feels all for forced like Miriam's accent is everyone's accent is English because this takes place in England and a fictional England in like 1659. I don't even know. I don't care. Something. Yeah. Whatever time Castlevania games normally take place in the 16 and 1700s. Um, it, it, it's a good game. There are a lot of funny moments. Like there's a, there's a moment where you have to rescue a villager by giving him what's called a waystone, which <sighs> if you've ever played like Symphony of the Night, it's like a library card. It teleports you back. Yeah. It's um, uh, like a, a, a shit. I think in, but Boulder's Gate, they were just called uh, return potions or re- scrolls of uh, return scrolls and things like that. Right. Every RPG. Or has. like how in Diablo 3, it's called Town Portal. Yeah. Some shit like that. Right. Um, you have to give him one of those. He goes back to the village. He says something along the lines of, uh, he says something, Manja makes a statement about her fashion. Yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, it's the ra- all the rage from Paris. Oh, Paris. I've never been to Spain. <laughs> 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 no, you big dummy. <laughs> it's it's really like there's a lot of little fun things like that in there. It's just goofy shit. Um, yeah. and there's a lot of there's a lot of references to other things too. Mm-hmm. Tons and tons of it's peppered with references, but none of them are in your face, which is what I like about it. Like you got to sit there and look and think about it. Or it's like a side item that yeah, has no a, purpose. Like a side said, item. Oh, yeah, like, you showed the uh, like, Game Grumps heads. Like if you sit there right now and you look at this game on Steam and you go to this game's guides, you can find a uh, a guide called Cheat Codes for the Name Menu or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really Cheat Codes so much. It's like th- these are Easter eggs that the game's put in where like how with Symphony of the Night, if you put a certain name in, you could play as Richter mm-hmm. or how in Zelda games, like... Uh, the aforementioned Link's Awakening, if you put your name in as Zelda in all caps, you get the menu music changes to a more upbeat Samba-like style. <laughs> or how in the original uh, Legend of Zelda, if you put your name in as Zelda, you started the second quest. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that, where it's just a little Easter egg shit. Um, Which you, did not help that Link's name is Zelda. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <make> right? <laughs> but that was also 30 years ago when the debate yeah. started to begin with, so it didn't not, matter. Not debate, just people being wrong. Yeah. I is- well, I mean, the fact that it's called The Legend of Zelda and the main character is Link, you yeah. know, like... <laughs> um, <laughs> Zelda's such a great guy. But, like, the way it goes is you put... There are names you can put in when you're starting a save file that yeah. allow you to start with certain items and stuff, and one of those names... Two of those names are for game grooms. Yeah. You literally get... Um, Aaron's cartoon face in the game as well as Danny's cartoon face in the game <laughs> and the description of him uh, the description of him reads something along the lines of uh, you know a, a mask for whatever completely points yeah actually I think I can pull it up still do, uh, do you, so they're actual wearable items where you just look like yeah them? yeah do they animate at all or no they, it's just no they're, okay. they're not animated they're see not that animated would blow me away but that'd be a bit much of a yeah no a, uh, um it would be a little too much to sit there and do that. Like, that's, there's no reason to animate those items, though. So, so yeah, but like, as far as references go, that's one of the reasons I like indie games. Yeah, where games will reference other games so very, very subtly, and usually you have to go and pick and find mm-hmm. and whatever. Or like a, a DLC, like with Rage um, Two, the BFG is DLC. Right. Uh, there's also a uh, isn't it free DLC too? Oh, I think it was pre-order bonus. Oh, 
it mm. wasn't technically free. Um, but either way, there's a play. There's a, a a mountain really early in the game I found that was like, duh, um, was Doom Guy Mountain or Doom Mountain Mount Doom something like that. It was a Doom reference. Yeah. Too, and uh, there's those are in different games, but in indie games they'll put in like legit like, hey, here's a character from another game. Yeah. Or here's an item representing that character, like complete because they just ask. It's not like. A big company that you know would be afraid to ask these people to use something, yeah, or they wouldn't just... because they wouldn't want to pay royalties. Any game is like, hey, can we use your? Yeah, sure, no problem. Go um, fucking put my character in your game as a hidden character. Going back to the customization story, the options yeah. and all that, the character that does that is an enemy in the game. It's called a killer barber, and it's literally just a crazy full suited barber with mm-hmm. scissors that attacks and tries to kill you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's what it does. Um, he is a Sweeney Todd reference. It's almost... Now that you say that he's using scissors, it's almost less Sweeney Todd and almost um, Edward Scissorhands. His name is literally Todd, though. Oh, um, okay. So his name is Todd. His right. name is literally Todd, and he basically tells a story. Um, my the, the name's Todd. The only way my curse will be lifted is if I barber my way through 666 different air styles. But he sits there and he tells a story while you're talking to him. Like, I'm cursed. I don't want this curse. You know, I don't yeah. want to be this. That's, this is not who I am. And he's like, well, why don't you take the scissors off? Like, if I could do that, I wouldn't be cursed. Da, da, da. <laughs> um, but they're, they're like, when you're sitting there and you're, you're reading through the, or you're listening to the conversation, whatever you prefer to do, it's, it's very much Sweeney Todd vibes. Yeah. I mean, his name is literally Todd. And he's a demon barber. He's a demon barber. So it's like... So do you have to beat him and then no. he gives you... Oh, so he's no. not an enemy. No. I mean... He's just an NPC. He's an MP, He's an enemy that is an NPC. Is basically what it is. Like, it uses okay. the same model and everything as the enemy. Oh, so there's enemies that you have to fight that are like him as well. Yeah, like, he, he, is, the, he is the killer barber enemy, uh-huh. but as an NPC. Oh, okay. Like, that, that's literally what he is. Um... And there's a lot. There's just a lot of little things like that. Um, like it'd be funny if they killed you and they just shave your head real quick, <laughs> like as a death animation. That would be really cool if they had put in different death animations for yeah. different things. Unfortunately, they didn't. You just die in the same generic way. You fly back, ah, and you yeah. fade to blood, and then it fades to black, and game over. Which I've died a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's an area in the upper clock tower, or. Not, well, it's not really a clock tower. It's the more like, like the name basically says the living machine. Yeah. So. Oh, so it's gonna be clockwork monsters or just no steampunkish. Oh. I don't know how to describe it. Okay. Well, it, it's I'll definitely it it's definitely way in the future. Yeah. For the time period, but it's not clockwork and it's not steampunk. Yeah. It's it's a library. Mm-hmm. And it's literally called like the Living Machine. I think is what the the name of it translates to because it's not in English. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. It's a really cool area though. I'm not downing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like there's there's uh there's a there's rooms where it has like like you know how spikes are just a staple in these kinds of games. Yeah. Instead of spikes, it has like saw blades or something grinders. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how to describe them, but they're just metal that rotates. Yeah, and. Uh, there's a room where it's on the ceiling all across the entire room. And then there's gaps yeah. where there are more of these. <laughs> and it's like you have like 17, 17 pixels that jump. Mm. Like it's very, you have to make very low jumps. Um, and if you don't, you die. Yeah. Like you don't die, but you take shitload of damage and then mm. die. Um, and of course, in this room, they threw enemies that hit you yeah. and knock you into it. And I think in this room in particular, I'm thinking of they even have the little fucking heads. The As Medusa, say the Medusa heads, except oh. they're Dulla, the 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 Dulla Dulla head. I don't know how to pronounce Dulhan? it. Dulhan. No, Dulla Dulla head. Dulla Dulla something. There's a knight that you fight. Dulhan or something like that. Dulla something. Yeah. Um, it's a ghost knight thing where the heads is separate from the body. Except the knight you fight does not have the head separate from his body. It just doesn't have a head. Exactly. Yeah, because it's like, probably like there's no ghost. head floating around it like you would in other. Well, yeah. like when you meet it in other games, it always has a head floating around it's because its head is over somewhere else, getting a beat. You know, turning things to stone and getting in everybody's way. Yeah, doing thirteen points of fucking damage <laughs> while I have eight hundred and some odd. So it's just pit pitted damage just to pink you off a ledge. just to pink you off a ledge. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it turns you to stone, and you fall into the fucking thing. So you take double, you take like ten percent of your health from stone being turned to stone, and you take ten percent of your health from being hit by spikes all at the same time. I was like, fuck. Actually, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but it's very. I think it's like eight point two five percent was what I calculated it out back in Symphony of the Night days. Yeah. But yeah, and like, there's a lot of environments like that. Um, the movement is really cool. There's a demon that you fight, and this is minor spoilery, but nothing major, because you probably, I don't know, if you've seen any gameplay footage or anything like that, you probably already know it's coming. Um, there's a demon that you fight that travels along beams of light, mm-hmm. that it sits there and jets out, and it's really fucking cool, so that's how you get through little ledges, like little, like you see, like as you're exploring, you go through the castle, you find those ledges that you should be able to slide through, but they're elevated. Mm-hmm. So you can't slide through him because you can't get up there. So you sit there, you get this ability, and you just bounce through it, like just on a beam of light. Ah, uh, okay. It's like it's it's a movement, it's almost like their version of the Metroid ball. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a movement thing that is just really fucking cool movement yeah. mechanic. Because you sit there and she's, you put you you push your uh, right stick or your mouse, and while you're holding your middle button, if you have if you're playing on PC with a mouse and keyboard, um, and she just holds her hand out and from her hand a blue beam of light pops out like a laser uh-huh. and then you just point it wherever you need to and then you let it go she just she just shoots through and it's like oh, nice. this is, it's like it's so stupidly basic but still really fucking cool and a really creative solution to getting through tight spaces like that yeah because of course she does have a slide dash because that's been a staple in the game for a little while yeah um and that I don't know where that actually comes from anymore because I'm probably like uh the middle GPA game, I think, was where sliding first came into play because I don't remember that. Part of me in Circle of the Moon. I, f- I know Richter could do that in Symphony of the Night, but it's a obviously one of those games did it. I know because I I remember sliding sliding under uh, things you couldn't we'll just walk through. Yeah, but I have no idea which one. Yeah, but it was definitely a GBA game. Yeah, like I said, I know Richter could do it. Uh, in Symphony of the Night, mm-hmm. but you never needed it to move. Like, you never needed it to move through anything. So, because, mm-hmm. like, with Alucard, he moves through shit with, like, turning into a bat or turning into mist and shit like that. Yeah. Whereas with Richter, it, he couldn't do those things, so he just didn't get access to those areas. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, like, the, there's just, there's a lot of really cool little things like that. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's tons of variety in the weapons. There's, like, I, like I said, I'm a sword guy, and you get a fucking lightsaber in this game. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's so the weapons do they are they like an RPG style? They just get better and better as you go along. You find new ones, or mm-hmm. do they run out? Okay, they don't yeah. break or anything like that. No, they no. do not break. There's no durability system. Mm-hmm. There is a crafting system though, mm-hmm. um, so you can upgrade them. So you can upgrade them. You can make new ones. You can make new weapons, armor, accessories. You can even make shards. I think mm-hmm. you can upgrade other shards. Um, you can enhance them and stuff as you get them. And the shards are really, really cool. There's, they, they range in effect from shooting a fucking fireball in their direction to, like, light a cannon on fire or just do a little bit of fire damage all the way up to, like, summoning lightning that strikes around the screen and hits everything. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, shards are at the core of this game. So, like I said, they're like souls from Aria of Sorrow or Dawn of Sorrow. Mm-hmm. Where they, they grant you abilities, obviously. You equip different ones. And, of course, you got, like, skill shards. you got passive shards. You've got active. you got manipulative. Stuff like that. So you that. do have ones that you have to activate and mm-hmm. use and stuff. Okay, that's... I was wondering, because a lot of the gameplay I watched um, was stuff where they had the shard that's just a sword that swings out and attacks enemies for yeah, you. Yeah, that is your familiar, and that's called Bloodbringer. Mm-hmm. And there that, that has its own... Ca- familiars have their own category. Oh, okay. So that's not... Yeah. That's not what the shards... The shards are... Like, like yeah, like with character some, ability. Oh, so they're kind of like the cards from Circle of the Moon. Um, lots of different, more like a combination of souls from the GBA games. Like, like I said, Dawn yeah. of Sorrow and stuff, and the key items from Symphony of the Night. Like with Symphony of the Night, I think, they were, okay, they, I remember Symphony of the Night. So they, they had key I, items. The souls, you, I didn't play that one. Yeah, so I had no ba- base like, reference. When I say like, just go back. It's the and same thing. play that game and then play this mm-hmm. one. It's the exact same mechanic, like mm-hmm. 100% exact same <laughs> mechanic. Like, like 
you know, you sit there, you kill an enemy, it turns to whatever color soul it is when it mm-hmm. release or shard it is when it releases the shard. It flies out and into Miriam. Mm-hmm. And it's the exact same thing in Dawn of Sorrow and all that. You kill an enemy, the soul flies out, boom, into you. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a really cool little thing. But there are a lot of different ones. Like, you can summon bats and shit to attack yeah. things. You can, uh, there's an ability that turns you into a bunny chick when you press the button. <laughs> So you want to be a bunny chick hopping around and kicking shit? You can do that. There you go. That's an option for you. Um, there are, and obviously, like I said, there are skill shards, like the double jump shard. There's a there's a shortcut wheel that you can get. Um, I let you like have different sets of equipment for different uses. Like I have oh, okay. a set of equipment for standard running around killing shit, mm-hmm. and then I have a second set of equipment for hunting things. Like, if I want to get a specific soul, or I want a shard, or I want to get a specific item, I switch to that equipment, and it boosts my luck and, and all that. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, there's also, later in the thing, and this is also a mild spoiler, but not something major, there is a library that you can go to where you can check out books. And these books give you, uh, as long as you have the book in your inventory, you go and check out one at a time, permanent buffs to stats. Nice. So, like, you can sit there and you can get, um, like, a permanent boost of luck by five. Yeah. like that really helpful for, for hunting down things um and then like the crafting system back to that you can like make potions and you can also make food items mm-hmm. so like you want some rice balls or some macaroni and cheese or pizza like you can have the ability to make those things are those just health boosts they they well they they're health potions they act as health potions that's yeah um but so they just carry a ton of food just to yeah yeah kind of like in skyrim yeah. like how you sit there and eat 13 cheese wheels in the middle of a fight because you're dying like um, um a wall chicken yeah, it's always been a staple. A wall chicken. Yeah. Which, by the way, there are tons of breakable walls. Most of the time, oh, you good. find like health potion or like uh, health ups or MP ups or yeah. ammo ups, because there are three different kinds of power ups. You get health increase, uh, MP increase, of course, mm-hmm. and then fucking ammo increase. You can carry more ammo for your weapons if you're a gunslinger. Yeah. Um, but the crafting system lets you make food and stuff. And the first time you eat a food dish, like the first time you eat pizza or something, yeah. it gives you a permanent stat boost. Ah. <laughs> It's so cool. Yeah, so... Uh, a hamburger. Here's plus 40 year cholesterol stat. It's like, like <laughs> yesterday I, I ate, um, I think, french fries. and gave me like a plus 30 boost to my health. So I got 30 extra HP. Like, fuck yeah, man. So it's it, it it's totally worth it to go around finding the ingredients. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is the, like, do you have to find a cookbook or do you, when you um, get the items, it just allows you... As you progress through the game, you unlock, you beat more bosses and stuff. Yeah. Uh, new recipes are regularly added. Okay. Yeah. You can also find recipes throughout the game in chests and in chest in walls and maybe as quest rewards too. Yeah. I, I've not delved too pardon me deeply into the quest rewards yet. I've done a bunch of quests, but I've not I, I can't recall if I found one that gives a recipe. Yeah. Um But yes, you do find like as you go on more stuff gets added. And same thing with all the crafting, like the armor and the weapons and all that. The further you go into the game, the further you, the deeper you get into the castle, yeah. the more new weapons you unlock that you can craft. And they always tell you exactly what you need. Like, oh, thank God. Like, you might be looking at a, a piece of armor, and it'll tell you you need um, a sinister skull, a dragon scale, and uh, something like, I don't know, strange leather. Mm-hmm. And then you just got to go farm those enemies. You got to figure out what enemy drops those things and then go farm them. <laughs> or check the Wikipedia real quick. Oh, yeah. Check. You know, just Google search. <laughs> How can I find dragon scale? You know, like. Where in dragon scale? And I found the dragon, by the way. Yeah. The dragon that you is up in the up in the living machine clock tower thing. So yeah. I just sat there. Um, so, okay. So level system. Is it XP based? Yeah. You level. I mean, it's, it's, it's simply the night. Yeah. Except. Um, the areas I, you just should not go. Like you could, there are definitely uh, areas you should not go. You very quickly realize, oh, I can't. I should like not be um, here. very early on in the game, um, when you're entering the castle, you have a choice to either enter the castle or you can go down below the castle. Yeah, and you can go down below the castle and be fine, um, but you drop into the underground waterways, which you can't at this point dive. Which I don't know how that works yet. I haven't gotten far enough to do it. Mm-hmm. But there's this like undead bonefish thing that does like 60, 70 damage to you. <laughs> like anywhere from 50 to 70 damage to you, depending on how much you grind it. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you don't want to fuck with it. Like I killed it. I managed to kill it with fucking something. I don't even remember what. 
Um, but yeah, you you can't go any further. Yeah. But you can definitely die if you wander into a wrong area. There are definitely sequence sequence breaking is something you can do. It's very much something you can do. Um, so like you know, it gives you that open world Metrovania feel. Um, Until you get to the, you can't jump high enough to get to the sledge. Right. You need to go find the fucking double jump or whatever. Or yeah, or like you can't open this door because you don't have a key to it. Type yeah. Shit. Yeah. So um, typical metroidvania yeah stuff, yeah yeah you gotta unlock fun. abilities to go further and that's exactly yes. th- this is a perfect example of that because you can't go underwater until at first you until okay. you get whatever item or shard or whatever that you go underwater um which i'm sure below the underwater the for i think it was actually called forbidden under of uh, forbidden waterways or something like that or yeah. something like that um you can't you can't i'm sure underneath that is where the hellscape is because there's good like that that there's always those areas in Castlevania. You got a clock tower, you've got an underground waterway. Or a sewer or something. Yeah, or a sewer, or you you've got like the church, you've got the library, mm-hmm. you've got general castle areas, and you've got a kitchen. The laboratory. You've got a laboratory. Steampunk area. Yep. And then you've got Hellscape. Yeah. You've always got Hellscape, and Hellscape is always below the waterways. Mm-hmm. At least in every game I've played that has had most it. of them. Yeah. Um and there is a there is a laboratory, the yeah. necromancy laboratory. Of course. It's not steampunk. It's all. It's just, it's just got to have a laboratory, beakers yeah. and things like that. Um, a lot of the later Castlevania games started doing the steampunk thing heavy, which was the one on the 3DS. Um, uh, Dawn of Sorrow. Dawn of Sorrow. Yeah. Well, no, there was a 3DS, 3DS, 3. There was no one. There wasn't a mainline Metroidvania Castlevania that I can think of that was on 3DS. But Dawn of Sorrow was on Nintendo DS. And then the only one that I can think of off the top of my head right now that was on 3DS was um, the Lord of Shadow uh, no, it connection came out after game. That it was one of the last you know what? Castlevania games. I think I remember owning it, and I can't remember. I, I thought I let you borrow it. It wasn't. It, nope. The only it thing wasn't that... Metroidvania. It was Lords of Shadow: Mirror of Fate. Oh, uh, maybe it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. But it was actually good. I don't know. I never played it. I bought it for my dad, I think, but I never yeah, played it. Hey, it was, it was released on my birthday six years ago. Go it me. was not. It was much more straightforward than Metroidvania. The funny thing is, it has a four point seven on IGN, but a seventy two on Metacritic, and ninety one percent of Google users liked the game. Yeah. So something was fucked up there. And a lot of the, well, like I said, I, I'm not surprised that the reviewers didn't like it yeah. because they were looking, f- and uh, fans that were looking for that classic Metroidvania probably would be a bit disappointed too. It was. It was. It's straightforward. It was very much it's the a, classic Castlevania gameplay. Yeah, it was yeah. less. It was not. It was all linear and yeah. It, it was, was actually linear. really well done, from what I remember. It was. I I enjoyed the hell out of it, uh, even for being li- a linear game. Yeah. Um. It it did it well. I mean, but, you know, and you can get away with a game like that as long as it's, it's good. At least I'm thinking I remember it doing it well. Right. I liked playing as Alucard and stuff like that too. Oh no, you're thinking of Donosaro then. Shit, is that the one I'm thinking of? Mm-hmm. There was an unlockable mode in Dawn of Sorrow where you could play Maybe as Maybe I didn't a, play as Alucard. I, where I you think could you play, play as, as a Alucard. vampire. No, that that's... You're thinking Order... Yeah, Dawn of Sorrow was the only one. Or uh, Order of Ecclesia. I don't remember then. That was on DS as well. I just remember. Which that game was also fantastic. And this game borrowed a lot of... A lot from that too, with mm-hmm. the strong female protagonist and the tattoos and just the general badassery. Um, which I, I definitely, definitely liked Order of Ecclesia. Which, if that's a game you never played, go play it. Um, but there's there's a lot to love about this game. There's beautiful environment, great enemy variety. There's a giant cat with horns that you fight. That's just it's just a cat. That's all it <laughs> is. It's a general. It's a it's a standard household cat, blown up to like a hundred times size with horns and wings, and it literally just sits there and do cat things. Like if you sit there and don't antagonize it, it'll just sit there, and clean itself, and look around and <laughs> be a cat, man. It's like <laughs> as soon as you walk up to it, though, it starts swiping at you or hitting you with fire, but uh, like fire plumes, like it makes fire come up from underneath you. Mm-hmm. But it is, you know, there's a lot of, like I said, this demon kitty, demon kitty, giant, and you can't pet it. I'm disappointed that you cannot pet it, but whatever. It's a giant demon cat that's trying that to eat your face. So I guess it makes sense. 
But I don't know how much more I can go on about this game. It it's yeah. it's fun. I've only got around eleven hours into it. I think I'm twenty five percent. I have twenty five percent of the map uncovered. So it's one of those things that I'm going to have to keep looking through. Um, but if you like Metroidvanias, you like Castlevania games, you like Metroid games, if you liked Symphony of the Night, you should definitely buy this game on your platform of choice. doesn't matter where it is because it's everywhere. Um, except Vita. If you have a Vita, why? Hmm. But um, That's all you have. That's all you have. Get I'm something sorry. else. <laughs> buy a Switch, god damn it. Um <laughs> Well, I guess it's also not on, like, DS or whatever, because why would it be? You know, 3DS, it did not get released on. Uh, It is a great game. I love it. I've considered streaming it, but at this point, I'm too far into the game to start streaming it. So, whatever. Um, The game is great. I have nothing more to really say about it. I have nothing but praise for it so far. Oh, some more of the minor issues, actually, I do have. Mm -hmm. Um the aforementioned twin dragon boss that you talked about uh that that's a difficult boss encounter but not unfairly difficult you just got to learn the attacks Mm -hmm. um but i i actually had a goofy thing happen with that boss and i i i I really wish i would have had the foresight to record it Mm -hmm. because i thought it was hilarious um i'm fighting this boss and as you go through and you hit there and you hit it you damage it or whatever its attacks get a little more desperate the closer to the end of that you have it and um, when you when it's i don't know if it's at the if when it's at the end but it happened when it was at the end um both dragons go in for this giant bite attack that does like a fuckload of damage mm-hmm. and i was I, I got trapped between them they were hitting me hitting me hitting me and i managed to pause the game get into the menu with eight health left <laughs> And I sat there, used my high potions to replenish, like, almost all of my health. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, they were still hitting me, but I wasn't taking damage. And then I clipped through the bottom of the platform I was standing on and popped on. Because the tower you fight them on is just a circular tower that you run up. And the way they do that is really cool because the perspective just changes. And you can see, like, the tower moving in the background as you go up. Yeah. And um, I just fell down to the platform beneath. I'm like... Uh, I don't think that was supposed to happen, but I'm not complaining because I'm not dead. Yeah. And so I start running off to the uh, left-hand side of the screen because that's how that's how you were going up the tower. And I come across them and I discover they're not fully modeled. The dragons? The oh, dragons are not so fully modeled. Like ends at the neck? Like, there's just like, <laughs> well, no, they're like, they, I, if they were, say, the size of a house cat, uh-huh. they were like three or four feet long. <laughs> But beyond their head and their claws, at the very beginning that you see normally during the boss yeah. fight, there's just nothing but a body. It's just, just, <laughs> it's just a potato. It's just it's just like a snake. That's all that's <laughs> left. And I, I was stuck behind them, and I couldn't do anything at first. I'm like, oh, shit, what do I do? And so I just kept running, and I got close enough to the one that's on the right side of the screen that I could hit it a few more times and kill it. And then get in between, get up to where you were supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. That sucks. It, that's awesome. <laughs> Like, it was amazing, because yeah. I was about to fucking die, and then the game said, oh, you know, fuck you, clip it. we'll clip you through the bottom of the platform, you'll be fine. And there are there are a number of areas where you can clip through yeah. like that. Um, it's almost shortcutty in a way. Like, if you're going down the clock tower, there's an area where there's a gear that turns into the wall, uh-huh. and you can duck down between the teeth of the gear and, and, like, literally duck down to get through areas. Like, there's actually yeah. a, a section where you have to do that, otherwise you get hit with spikes and die. Mm-hmm. And if you sit there and do it on this particular area with the wall, you just hit the wall and then drop down below the gear. Because it can't it doesn't push you that way, it yeah. pushes you down through this what's supposed to be a solid floor instead. Yeah. So it's like, oh that's weird. Kind of neat. Just, you know, and then you keep going down faster. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it it's kind of strange. Like there's there's a few areas like that where instead of going where you think you should, you clip mm-hmm. through and fall or you clip and it, it and so far, I've not had an issue where I've clipped through something and then died because of it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the aforementioned fight with the twin dragons, it saved my ass. So, mm-hmm. um, but there's things like that. Nothing, nothing game breaking. Nothing over the top. Nothing like, oh fuck this shit. Yeah. So it's fine. Um, cool. I've been playing more Metro because I can't put that game down. Apparently, uh, I was I I bought. Oh, did it finally release on Steam? 
No, no, it's oh, uh, yeah, Game Pass. Night Exodus. Oh, Exodus, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Exodus, yeah, yeah. I forgot they put it on Game, game Pass. Pass. I was like, "Fuck it!" I can basically it's free now. I bought the upgraded Game Pass too. So, like, when I do finally break down and switch to Windows 10, I have Game Pass on that. Which now I'm like, maybe I'll have to do that soon because it sounds awesome. But um, I'm playing the game, and oh, Metro shit. damn near gave me a heart attack. I have ran. I rambled on about this game for a while. Yeah, oh yeah. We're it's in fine. The, we're over game. an hour now. <laughs> uh, we finish up after this, but yeah, yeah. It nearly gave me a heart attack. Um, I did not intend to do that. <laughs> it's just a good game. Luke wanted to have his turn. I wanted Luke to have his turn. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, I ended up just playing Metro instead of playing Watch Dogs Two, which is what I actually was going to talk about. Right. But I played like 15 minutes of it and was not in the mental space to play that game at all. Right. Like yeah. it's um. It's a game that I can already tell some of the humor hasn't aged very well. Right. Because the game is very meme-y. Uh, and it even back, back then it would be cringy. Now it's almost too too much for right, me. Right, it's yeah. like almost hipster hackers. And oh it's just God. I hate all of them not for no reason all right off the bat. See, that's one thing. So I'm like, I don't, uh these characters. So that's one thing I like about this game is that none of it's in your face. Yeah. And all of it's done in a way I think will maybe not always be relevant, but it's never going to be cringy, you know? Yeah, this has, like, in cuts, in loading screens, you'll see, like, bad rage faces. <laughs> yeah, it's like 2009 memes. But it's not it's not too much. It's just the characters were very, very, like, hipstery, and uh, just the, some uh, of the dialogue's kind of cringy. Right. And, I like, hacker talk, so I'm already, like... I can't focus on any of this right now. I've got to go do something else. So I went and played Swords, uh, Blade and Sorcery for a while too, which is just that's the VR game, right? Yeah, that that game, like when you're playing it, it's kind of like this sick, brutal, like I'm you're just like hacking people sometimes apart, and it's to the point where I'm like realizing like I've been smacking this dead body with this axe. <laughs> For like five minutes straight after I finished off all the enemies, Luke, because Luke, I wanted to decapitate it, Luke. And I'm you like, sit there and kill people in Blade and Sorcery, so you don't go murder people. That's no, life. that's like, like you told me that story, and I was like, someone cringy would say that, but it's almost like I literally got to where I was. My whole goal was so that I could bash someone with the shield and disarm them enough so that I could grab them by the throat and fling them over a bridge. And I sat there trying to do this for like 15, 20 minutes. Like that was my goal. And then I like realized I could impale someone with the sword, lift them up and dump them over the bridge that way. So that became my goal. You sat there and uh, <laughs> you suffer off that it's, guy. Yeah. It's, but it's so like, it, it, it's, it's that primal part of your like fucking fight brain. Like it literally got to the point where I found out you could grab someone by the top of the head so my goal was oh i need to grab somebody by the top of the head and slit their throat and then i'm like what the fuck am i what why did, why did that thought even come into my head yes. this game just brings out the worst violence like depraved like i'm gonna fucking cut off both this character's legs and then let them waddle around like even though they instantly die right yeah that happens but it's it's fucking brutal man at the same time it's so much fun because you're fucking medieval swords and i mean sorcery is only a little part because they haven't put that much in still an indie game right yeah so you only have lightning and like any weapon you can make it float to you jedi style that's kind of neat but yeah i'm like so you're fucking when you have tons of enemies coming at you and you're just like real quick stabbing someone hard enough that they just get immediately impaled and die whip the blade out and then go and start slashing at someone just retardedly and they could just <laughs> keep on blocking <laughs> yeah. until you finally bash them enough to like just it's it's crazy and it's violent and then it's like afterward it's almost like that old like that stereotypical masturbation joke of oh yeah. my god what was i doing this game literally has that yeah. oh my god you're sitting there i afterwards. was just stabbing the same female character model in the face like for 10 minutes what the fuck's wrong with me you sit there you're like what the fuck did i just masturbate to and it's like, yeah it's you, almost like, like you've gone I, down this rabbit hole and you just realize you watched a like you watch a chick fuck a horse you're like where the fuck how did i get here? <laughs> it's like oh my god what is wrong with me what the hell man <laughs> see that's why sheltering your children is bad exactly <laughs> okay. exactly Let them experience some of the world or they're turning into freaks 
All right, guys. But it, I, it's, it's so brutally fun. It's like, oh my god, what have I been doing? I'm gonna start the next wave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they say that video games and violence bring out like that side of us. Mm-hmm. I've never shot up a school. I've never even thought no, about it. It's it's an excuse. I've been for playing. Violence, I've been playing. Is or I've been playing is. violent games my whole life. Yeah. You know, I've never gone out and beat somebody with a baseball bat. I've never gone out and drove a fucking truck through a crowd of people. You know, I don't do these things. I think that's where the psychopath comes in, where it's like that happens at the game and you do it in the game. And afterwards, it's like, oh, my God, that's fucking horrifying. I never want to see that in real life. Yeah. Or I never do that in real life. Yeah. And someone, you know, most be like, Meh, maybe we'll see. No. <laughs> like, after doing it in the game, like, oh, maybe I want to slit a throat now. That looks kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I just I don't think I don't think video games incite violence the way some people try to make it out to. So no, I don't think so. That's just I, it's, me. An, it's another outlet. It's fun. Yep. Most people can differentiate fake from reality. Yeah. And no, it, it, I'm sure there's been a black. I haven't, I haven't watched Black Mirror. I'm assuming there's probably an episode that compares VR to real life, uh, because I mean, that's the sky, sort of shit that show's known for. Yeah. VR isn't anywhere near capable of being that level yet. Just t- take watch a video of VR chat and you'll realize, oh no, we're way far off of that. <laughs> VR chat's a fucking clusterfuck. That's no, just a fucking nightmare. All right, all right. So we should probably wind it down there. Yeah, guys, because um, we only have so much space in our plot host, and we are going to exceed it this year, this month if we keep it up <laughs> like this. Next uh, episode will be like, hey, how's it going? Oh, we're the Ungodly Geeks. Bye. <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a four and a half minute episode what would you do this week not a damn thing because we only have seven megabytes to upload with <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we hope you enjoyed that go play go buy uh blood Saint ritual of the night it's a fantastic game Ika deserves the support the company mm-hmm. behind it whose name escapes me deserves some support they made a fantastic product <laughs> they took backer feedback they took fan feedback they incorporated it they fixed things not cont- konami inc <laughs> they're continuing to fix things and release patches to upgrade and add content so go buy the game it's great 40 bucks not not a not a wallet breaker. It's not a full triple A title, but it's it on def- sale right now, ten percent off. That's on most true. Yeah. Too. yeah. Um, until the twenty eighth, I believe. So you've got seven more days from mm-hmm. the day of this recording because we recorded on Friday. So go buy it. It's it's a fucking fantastic game. Um, I I can't sing its praises enough. It's the new Hollow Knight. Um, For you, yeah. But actually, really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Hollow Knight's great, but Hollow Knight's overly difficult for some people. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I love this game. This isn't that perfect, right? This is not. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 its difficulty it. curve is perfect. It's exactly yeah. perfect. Like it's not too difficult, but it's not too easy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's right there in that comfortable middle ground. Right. On. Um. So yeah, go grab it. it it's yep. great. Um. For the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys Check have a good us day. Out online, guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's not forget that. Patreon, Twitter. Go give us money. Yep. We, we need it. We're broke. Um. <laughs> Rate us on iTunes. Whatever it is. I don't. I think it's too late for that. Like, still rate us. Like, we've been doing this for two fucking years now. So, hey, we're next episode's episode 100. We should probably actually come up with something for that. That'll be our four minute episode. We do have over 100 episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get what you're saying. By the numbers. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Fuck EA and your surprise mechanics. You pieces of fucking shit. Twats.